college. The best goddamn years of our lives. But besides all the bright futures, 25 to 35 hours a week spent studying, and time dedicated to coursework, there's a reason why it's so unforgettable. Or should I say forgettable? Landing back in San Luis Obispo for my second year at Cal Poly, this was exactly the kind of rowdy college environment I wanted to join. But little did I know, my residence on Lemon Street would teach me more than I could have possibly imagined. Hello to the children of Lemon Street. Time to talk about insurance. Adults have insurance or at least know what their insurance status is. Children don't have insurance and don't know anything. Your neighbor, Gus. Who was this character? And why was he giving us insurance advice? I had to know. So? I asked him. My name is Gusto Nelson. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I came to Poly in the 60s. When I graduated, I went to the Marine Corps. I flew jet fighters for 12 years. And then I went to nursing school and I worked as a critical care nurse in ICU and ER for 23 years. Got paralyzed from immunization from the waist down, but I still recommend the immunizations. Wait a second. Did he say that he went to Cal Poly in the 60s? Late 60s, um, 66 to 71, took me five years because I'm not so bright. Um, the school had a we want to help feeling. For instance, during finals, we, we often didn't go to class as much as we should. So we had to stay up all week and we would get these cross top bennies. They're benzedrine, they're a, they're a mild amphetamine. And I felt bad about this. So I went to the Cal Poly Health Center and said, hey, you know, we have to stay up. But is there something better maybe that has vitamins in it? I mean, I had no idea. They wrote a prescription for pure methamphetamine, which was still available at the time. You know, these are things that wouldn't happen now. There was a helpful attitude at the university at the time that I really liked. Next. I think I was beginning to understand this guy. As a neighbor, he was just reaching out to us with some metaphorical meth. At the end of our interview, I sat with Gus out on his porch. He needed a cigarette and offered me a beer. Who am I to deny hospitality? I asked him if he had any pictures of his life. Cal Poly in the 60s, fighter jets? He responded with a resounding, hell no. He said, when we take pictures, we don't really make memories. Instead of photos, he writes, a journal for each country, trip, an instance worth remembering. Writing was his therapy, his denouement. But with all this writing, why the letters? I discovered early on that students and young people, they don't um, pay attention to you. So I've resorted to letters and notes. They're hard copy. They're in real words. I don't speak very well, but I've learned to write over the years so I can express myself better. The goal is to help these kids grow up. Driving and helped he has. Virginia. Not all of Gus's letters are about insurance. Some tell us to check in on our parents or be nice to old people. Many people, I think, would choose to not be involved, but I choose to be involved. I'm sort of a secular humanist kind of person. 
I try to develop sort of a sense of neighborhood. Some of the students are sort of slow to get into that, but generally by the time they leave, we have a minor sense of the Lemon Street neighborhood. Okay? Yeah. Good. That's awesome. Good. My pleasure. Gus has many lessons to share, and hopefully there will always be ears around to listen. But if you take anything from my time on Lemon Street, let it be this. Be present, be thankful, and if nothing else, go say hi to your neighbor. You never know what they might have to say. Drinking coffee black as iron And I couldn't be much higher Without falling out of my chair I've been so